Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome back to the realest podcast in the dunya The Three Muslims You can see our very beautiful sign Right above our very beautiful brother, mashallah <laughs> We are very, very proud to be here Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair for tuning in How are you guys doing? Alhamdulillah, how about you? Alhamdulillah, pretty good, pretty good How's it looking? How's the audio? Yeah, let us know how the audio is, how the video is, if everything is in sync Keep in mind, though, however, inshallah, next week, July 1st on Friday, professional edits, everything's airing, you know, no more uh, of, you know, this view that they see, everything will be in sync, inshallah. Jeez, look how clean this is up here. Yeah, that's what oh, it look is. At the, look at the video. Yeah, it's, it's Damn, nice. Damn, the it's reflection. Nice alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's clean, man. Audio's great. Gabriel Al-Romani. Wa alaykum as Wa alaykum as baby boy. Sheikh ul How's it going, bro? How's it going? Alhamdulillah. So we're not going to waste too much time, guys. Might be a lot of uh, new viewers here from... Uh, who, who, who am I talking about? Look at this. Gabriel, Gabriel's giving a spoiler, bro. He wrote, just landed to you guys uh, soon. Gabriel, bro. bro. You, you you give him too much, bro. Give him too much. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Either way, bro. Good to see you landed to you soon, bro. Um, Rami. A lot of people from Matt Walsh's channel. Who is Matt Walsh? Matt Walsh. Actually, I don't know what his description is, to be honest. Like, Matt <laughs> he's, Walsh. He's been known as a, as a transphobe. Oh. He's been known as a homophobe. Oh. He's been known as a misogynist. Damn. The man, the myth, the legend, doing work that most people are too coward to do today. Mm. SubhanAllah. Yeah. May Allah guide him. But Matt Walsh, bro, uh, he made this documentary called mm. What is a Woman? Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like, SubhanAllah, after so many years of civilization, medical advancement, technology, mm. No one can give us give us a clear answer for that, bro. And what's going on today is he made a documentary. You know, it's on the dailywire.com. I recommend everyone to go watch it. It's it's definitely it's paid, but it's worth it. We've done it ourselves. But there's a little bit of clips we're gonna react to today, inshallah. And uh smash the like button, please help the algorithm, inshallah. Uh the enemy is gonna be against us, definitely. Angle. So so definitely. Angle, my man. Who's angle, my man? <laughs> angle, my man. You mean Angel, my man? This is the same brother that uh, two minutes before the live stream, he's like, are you sure you're all going to be ready in two minutes? Okay. Come on now. Of course we are. Uh, Ramiga Dice Cap on deck. Before we jump right in. Can you see it? This oh, video, see of course it. you can see it, bro. This video got a 9.0 on IMDb when mm -hmm. I last checked. Very hard for the critics. But Rolling Stone, New York Times, they've been slamming him without even watching it. I think that's unfair. So let's see for ourselves. Bismillah. For the first time in history, a marginalized group has a huge dollar sign on the top of their head. We have five children's hospitals in the United States promoting that. And what? That's a phallioplasty, that's a bottom surgery. We have five children's hospitals in the United States telling girls that they can be boys at $70,000 a pop in a surgery that has a 67% complication rate. That will kill me from infection that I can't sue on. We're butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything. I have three kids at the age that they're doing this to kids. I'm not transphobic. I love my kids, and I love other people's kids, and you should too. This is wrong on so many levels. Rami, that was a biological what? That was a biological woman. That was actually a woman. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Allah, it's, it's heartbreaking. Sister Saleh wrote, is he trans? No, she was a woman, bro. I mean, sis, it was a woman. That's Is that not crazy? She's right. She's saying nobody's willing to talk about it. Yeah. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it today, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, so what is what is going on with this? And, you know, we won't say what it is because yeah. we're not trying to get, you know, pl deep platform. But of the Alphabet Gang, the T's. Right. Where did this all begin, bro? I'm sure they've been watching our videos this long. Speaking historically? 
recently, recently, in terms of this trend of teas? I don't know, bro. Well, in the documentary, one of the reasons, and we'll, we'll get into this in a bit, but Matt Walsh was saying there's a lot of money to be made, bro. A lot of money to be made. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did say that. Sex reassignment surgery is the medical uh, transition. Mm-hmm. Extremely, extremely good for making money. Very good for making money. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Mm-hmm. And they are pushing those pills. Mm-hmm. The puberty yeah. blockers. Yeah. Supposedly saying that there's no adverse effects, that if you got off of it, your body would just resume puberty. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying not to spoil the uh, documentary so much. I'm thinking yeah, of all these things that I learned yeah, yeah, from it. Yeah. And I'm trying not to spoil it. Just watch it. It's really Y'all gotta good. watch it. Trust me. Yeah. So, so Sabrina wrote Alfred Kinsey. She's right. But yeah. it, it, it's, it's all going with this transhumanist movement that wants to kind of change the creation of Allah. But it's we know better. Yeah. SubhanAllah, now there's Buzz Lightyear, bro. There, there's, you can't even put put a, a non-woke scene in Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Man, that's such a letdown, bro. We wanted to watch it. I was so hyped. We were going to watch it last Buzz week. Buzz Lightyear used to be my hero Damn. when I was a kid. And now it's back down to zero. Yeah. Damn. I, had a, I have a scar in the middle of my forehead. I told you all this from when I was a kid. <laughs> I thought it was Buzz Lightyear. Mm. <laughs> oh, for Allah. All right, we, we should talk about the clip a little bit more, right? Let's yeah, just yeah, let's yeah. analyze it a little bit more. This is this was a, a biological woman who, for whatever reason, you know, um, felt within herself that she should be a man or she is a man or whatever it was. And obviously, the people that she was surrounded by pushed this. The doctors that she went to pushed this. Uh, she has three children, subhanAllah. And she is basically suffering from a, an infection that eventually will kill her, as she says, uh, because of the surgery she underwent and everything. Uh, that was supported by doctors. Now, I think the biggest problem, that's something that she was highlighting in this clip, is they're putting this onto kids. Mm. Kids. And like not just like, you know, maybe grade grade eight, grade nine kids, like elementary school kids. There, I saw one book. Actually, I think it was in the documentary as well. That one book where there was a picture very graphic picture and it's supposed to be a, a children's book subhanallah children don't even know anything about sexuality about gender even really to be honest they look like you know they could see the boys are boys girls are girls girls play with dolls the boys play with sticks and push each other and stuff and there's a little bit of the difference there guys are more competitive and blah blah blah, blah, blah all that stuff they can see that but other than that they don't know anything and we're trying mm-hmm. to teach them what that basically this entire encyclopedia of not 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 sex but gender and gender is not just man or woman boy or girl male female Mm. it's whatever you want it to be which is use your imagination self-exploration they use all these amazing you know introspective uh enlightening words you know to veil this go for ideology it's insane bro Or, or should i say gender ideology but uh, unfortunately, Jordan Peterson, you know, I don't want to give too many spoilers. Y'all better go on dailywire.com and watch it. But he got the man, Jordan Peterson himself, on the documentary. And Jordan Peterson was saying that there's masculine men, or sorry, masculine girls, and there's feminine boys. What about it? It doesn't mean you got to go change the whole creation, no? Yeah. yeah it doesn't, 100%. bro. SubhanAllah. You want to go to the next one? Let's do it, inshallah. Inshallah. My name is Michelle Forcier, um, and I have a medical degree from University of Connecticut Residency, University of Utah Pediatrics, and I've worked for a number of different Planned Parenthoods for 20 years. I do advanced contraception and abortion, as well as gender hormones, and sort of looking at the whole sort of schema of gender, sex, and and reproductive um, justice. So you've done a lot of work in this field. Could you just start by telling us? Sure. uh, At what age can a child first begin to transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born yeah well i mean there's there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender some children figure out their gender really early and the reason why we are say oh that's it's interesting or important is because they're figuring out their gender identity is not necessarily congruent with their sex assigned at birth when the when the doctor sees the penis and says this is a male has the sex of male, that's a arbitrary 
distinction. Telling that family, based on that little penis, that what? your child is absolutely 100% male identified, no matter what else occurs in their life, that's not correct. So, have you ever met a four-year-old who believes in Santa Claus? Mm-hmm. So this is someone who believes that a fat man is traveling through the sky on a flying reindeer at lightning speed, coming down his chimney with presents. Yeah. Would you say that this is someone who maybe has a tenuous grasp on reality? They have an appropriate four-year-old handle on the sure. reality Agreed. that's very real for them. Agreed. Agreed. But Santa Claus is real for them, but yeah. Santa Claus is not actually real. Yeah, well, and, but Santa Claus does deliver their Christmas presents. Well, yeah, but he's not real, though. To that child, they are. When I see a child who, you know, believes in Santa Claus, and then let's say this is a boy and he says, I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. This is someone who can't distinguish between fantasy and reality, so how could you take that as a reality? I would say that as a pediatrician and as a parent, I would say how wonderful my four-year-old and their imagination is. Male gametes. That's what makes me male. No, your, your sperm don't make you male. Then what does? It's a constellation. In reality. In truth, okay? Whose truth are we talking about? The same truth that says we're sitting in this room right now, you and I. No, you're not listening. If I, if I see a chicken laying eggs and I say that's a female chicken laying eggs, did I assign female or am I just observing a physical reality that's happening in the world? Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Well, a Does chi a chicken commit suicide? Let's frame it, with... it because you're talking, you're trying yeah, to... A chicken has sex like any, like any biological organism. A chicken has organism. an assigned gender. But a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs? That's a, we that's... assume they're female if they lay eggs. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders? Got him. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview because it seems like it's going in a particular direction. Well, you're a medical professional. I am a medical professional. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids? or Again. I'm a physician and I use medication. You're choosing exploitive words, drugs I give to I'm, kids. I'm choosing a chemical word consumption. that was in a dictionary. That's not a correct term for puberty blocking. I, mean, in I could like look person. it up on my phone, but I'm pretty sure if I looked it up. Like, you, you can look it up on your phone. It says medical definition, the administration of a drug to bring about a marked reduction in the body's production of androgens and especially testosterone. And I'm saying as a pediatrician who takes care of hundreds of these kids, when you use that terminology, you were being malignant and harmful. I mean, there are some who would say that giving chemical castration drugs to kids is malignant and harmful. It's about the context of caring for a child and, and seeing the, the suffering that kids can have that have not been in affirmative home situations. So we're going on this journey. Boys can be girls, girls can be boys. Men can be women, women can be men. It makes me wonder, what, what is a woman? What is a woman? A woman is someone who claims that as their identity. It could be many things to many people. It could be many things to many people. Guys, take your kids to your doctor when they're sick. This is who they're going to be speaking to. These are the modern medical practitioners of 2022. Get yourself a Muslim doctor, please. The love of And a legit Muslim God. doctor. Yes, please, inshallah. Oh, my Lord. I've seen this before, but it's... Oh my God! It's like my faded memory bias just doesn't want to remember. I know we BS. watched this last week. Yeah, that's oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, a lot of things to unpack here. I say we go chronologically. The first thing that she was rambling about is this whole thing about kids having a gender identity at a very young age. Okay, oh no, bro, go on to that because you had a lot to say in our uh, alphabet episode. When a kid is young, little boy, little girl. Just, just think that they don't know. They don't know. Well, I mean, they, it's like you said, they believe in Santa Claus. They believe in the Easter Bunny. They believe in like Spider-Man and Superman. And they, they think this is real. And then she's saying like, oh, well, it's real to them. Okay, fair enough. But it doesn't change the fact that it's not actually real. So if the kid now says, oh, like if a, if a little boy says, oh, I'm a girl, that doesn't mean it's real. And that that doesn't mean that an, a parent should uh, pretty much submit to that. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that when they start getting older, they don't actually need the parent's consent to take these drugs. I think that's that's a bit much. Yeah. 
Is this is this a live or a premiere? I don't know, bro. You tell me. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Bro, we gotta study medicine. Real medicine. Um, yeah, so this is a biological woman, from what I know. She's a doctor, legit doctor. Uh shout out to uh is it Nara or Nora? Thank God I was born in a third world Muslim country. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's the dream. All right. But someone has to speak about this being in the West, and we're not we're not going to use, you know, derogatory language or hate on them or shaming types or anything like that. We're coming from a strict academic, scientific, medical point of view. The same one that these degenerates think that they're using. We're going to use the same medical terminology and point of view. Uh, they talked about Lupron, bro. I don't mean you want to go into that. This is a drug used to medicinally castrate, uh, let's say, older people that like yeah. to prey on younger people. Yeah. This is what they're give, giving prepubescent boys to yeah. not start the journey and transition into manhood. Actually, I mean, you're the uh, the more medical expert here. I think but how does that make you feel, bro? Just knowing that, like, let's say, like, yeah. you have a younger brother, yeah. 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 and he's yeah. young, yeah. and he's like, you know, he's going to school. He learns about this whole toxic masculinity. You know, he sees manhood as something. You know, by yeah. the way, guys, stay tuned for July first, inshallah, first episode dropping. We talk right about that. But manhood as something taboo, something scary. You know, mm -hmm. he goes on on the media, and he sees either a weak man, or he sees a complete evil, vile, toxic man. He doesn't see a good model of masculinity. So he says, you know what? I don't want to become a man. I want to stay a nice boy that I am. Yeah. Let me take this drug. And today they're passing bills that parents don't need to give their consent. Yeah. And it's against the law for them to do it. What if this was your brother? Man, wallah, that's, that's hard. That's completely heartbreaking. They talk about a case uh, somewhere in Canada, maybe Vancouver or something, where um, basically this they've not forced it upon a young girl, but kind of forced it on her father. Uh, and... Basically, there are legal consequences for him uh, trying to fight against it, basically, which is absolutely absurd uh, because now we're living in a day and a time where uh, parents have very little say in what their kids learn. If their kids are being brought in, you know, what fantasy that <laughs> their kids are living in, subhanAllah. But I find this this trend a lot and, and it's really important that we go to the root of the problem, right? You're not going to snip every branch of the tree if you want to get rid of the tree. You go to the root, you dig it out, get rid of it, right? The root of all this, I mean, if you look at it, we live in a very liberal society. Um, and, and liberalism at its core is do whatever, you know, pleases you, uh, mainly physically, right? Whatever pleases you, go for it. And they have little care to what is actually harmful, beneficial, or truthful. That's why they allow alcohol. That's why they legalized weed in a lot Not of places. Not just a lot, but promote it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Including, they, they sell cigarettes, they legalize weed in Canada, alcohol is cool, you know, to these people, even though alcohol literally kills. Mm. Alcohol-related murders and deaths are, you know, honestly, one of the highest stats when it comes to death and, and murders and so on and so <laughs> forth. And, and accident-related deaths and the DUIs, obviously, all these crazy things, because they don't care about what's actually healthy. And what they don't talk about a lot, which is the harsh truth, the harsh reality, is things like trans regret. Are there mm. not children out there that regret the fact that, you know, they were ignorant and these doctors put these pills down their throat, essentially? Are there not people mm. like the, the, the woman that you saw that looks like a man now because she only went surgery because they were telling her that that's okay, go for it. And now she is literally killing her. They we're not going to talk about the people who, un she talked about, you know, do, do chickens unalive themselves. People, trans people unalive themselves because of trans regret. Because people like you put it out there. It's like, no, it's normal. It's okay. They do it. And then they don't feel normal anymore. They mm. don't. Because you're not basing it in truth. And she, well, that's the last thing I'm going to say. She, she said, whose truth are we talking about? Mm. My truth is that you're a moron. Facts. That, that's, that is what I'm going to refer to you as uh, for now on. Because that's my truth. That's a fantasy I live in. You're just a moron. All right? Intellectual, subservient, <laughs> ideologically molested, pusillanimous. I want, I want to, I want, I'm going to pin the next person that can tell me who said that. We'll continue. Bismillah. But um, there's only one truth. There's only one reality. And I understand words are a construct, so on and so forth. But when people say gender or sex, uh, referring to biology, it is not subjective. It is objective. And yes, I understand that there could be, there are different sexes. It's not straight male or female. You could have uh, what is it, X, 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 Y, or blah, blah, whatever. But if you look at the most rare one, I think it's, what is it, X, 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 Y, as a chromosomal yeah, disorder, yeah? Exactly, yeah? The most rare one only occurs in males. So mm. even then, it's still, you're either male or a female. Yes, there's a maybe a binary, you know, in between some places, does occur. 
other than that, there is no spectrum. There is no change. And for you to make it up based on literally you're just your imagination and put mm. that onto kids as well, man. It's harmful. See, you can be a legit, you know, hermaphrodite. You're born with both. You could be a chromosomal hermaphrodite, like, you know, Klinefelter. Any of these syndromes where you have like two X's and one Y, just like Rami was saying, or one Y, two X's, or just one X, that's possible too. And you look at these abnormalities, but they were made perfectly in the reverence that Allah has created them as such. And I believe that Allah has, you know, Allah doesn't make any mistakes. And if they were created as such, khalas. We're not talking about those. We're talking about the people that were born as XX or XY. And they're letting society dictate that they should not be that way. Omar Zaid, Dr. Omar Zaid, may Allah bless him, talks a little bit about this in his book. He says that, you know, when these kids are young, right, they have different, uh, you know, amounts of uh, androgens in the placenta, right? Basically where they're growing in the womb. And these dictate on a scale and spectrum, according to his predominant research as a medical practitioner, as an MD, these dictate where they fall in a scale of masculinity or femininity of being a woman or a man. SubhanAllah, take that in. The amount of androgens or hormones in a mother's womb dictate how masculine or girly a boy is going to be or how girly or of a tomboy a girl would be. You know? This is what he did and conducted in his research. SubhanAllah, it doesn't mean that they're a boy or a girl, vice versa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. SubhanAllah. Bro, I can, I can explain this very easily. Go for it, bro. For people, right? We, as humans, go through stages. Okay? Sometimes, when we're in the stage, we might think a certain way. We might feel a certain way. Right? That passes. And once it passes, now we feel and think completely different. Yeah? Not to air anything out, but look at this. This is a tattoo. As Muslims, we're not supposed to have tattoos. I'm a revert. So I got this before coming to Islam. Now, when I got this tattoo, I was very sure this is what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Right? Why? Because that's just the state. Just I was your in. mental state it's at that point. just the mental state, that's right? What it is. Now, as time passed, I literally would look at this tattoo in the mirror and I would have this almost like remorse, this regret, like, what did I just do? Like, I'm, I can never undo this. Even if I were to get the laser removal, I can never fully undo this. And I will go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I can guarantee you everyone in this world who has tattoos has this. Well, they'll go through stages where they're actually, oh, I actually like what I have. And then they look at it and they're like, why did I get this? I made a huge mistake or something like this. Or mm. I should cover this up or something. Mm. Right? Now, what I'm trying to get at with these tattoos, this example that I'm showing here myself as an example is that I went against the natural inclination. I went against the fitra, right? So that's why there's this huge regret. You do something that's aligned with the fitra, there is no regret. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like this See, whole transgender truly thing. truly for your fitra. Yeah, yeah, this whole transgender thing. And, and for people who don't know what fitra is, this is your natural inclination. Mm. It is your natural internal state, the thing that you are born with. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if, again, if, if you do something that's aligned with that, then you don't feel this regret that's constantly coming up um, through these stages that things change. But if you do something that's against, then. Mm-hmm. Let me touch on this point that Ru wrote, because, you know, a lot of people are wondering, why, why do food, why does food matter? I was speaking about this with someone, I'm not going to mention any names now, but there are things in our diet, there are things in the medications that we take, the prescriptions that we take, these are all to some degree, greater or lesser, going to be endocrine disruptors today. What does this mean? Your hormonal system that Allah has designed perfectly to not need any drugs, subhanAllah, to not need any of these enhancements, to not need anything, right? To modify it. They're ex- it's extremely sensitive, bro, right? Women take birth control pills that mess up their hormones for life. You know, men take performance enhancing drugs that change up their hormones for at least a couple of decades bro up to science has proven this if not just a few years and cause permanently damage in, in some way shape or form in a lot of cases but what we do know for a fact is when a woman who is pregnant 
is eating, you know, a lot of the things today that have med medications or at least chemicals in the food, right? GMOs, uh, pesticides, these types of things in our diet, in the water, it really does affect the developing fetus to some greater or lesser degree. And that's a leading cause of what's going on with, uh, you know, these birth abnormalities and the, the androgens and the hormones. And it leads to a bunch of these kids growing up either as masculine girls or feminine boys. And it's one of the leading causes, bro, but it's profitable, right? So why talk about it? Big Pharma is one of the biggest culprits between behind this, behind uh, the alphabet movement, behind the sex reassignment thing. Extremely disturbing, bro. Yes, yeah, a lot. Uh, one last thing I want to say to kind of piggyback off what Brother Angel said is, um, subhanAllah, there are some things that we just we shouldn't be allowed to choose, bro. <laughs> we shouldn't be allowed to choose some things. Uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides you're gonna be a male or a female, khalas, uh, like you don't have the right to choose. You don't, you know. Uh, I don't you don't you don't get to choose anything really. You don't get to choose your ethnicity, you don't get to choose your skin color, you don't get to choose what you know class you're born into, if you're low class and middle class, if you live, live in a first world country, third world country, and uh, sex, gender, whatever you want to call it, just one of those things. You you just can't choose and khalas like Allah gives you something. Who's more wise? You or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is more wise. Even, even, even if you for some reason disagree, you can't actually change it. That's I think that's the worst part about it. You will never actually change it effectively. Mm -hmm. You can only try your absolute hardest. And I think that's why a lot of people have uh, this trans regret because mm -hmm. a man will look at a woman and be like, I'm going to become that. You will never be that. Mm -hmm. You will only never. pretend you are until you get hit in the face with the reality that you're not. And Damn. then it's going to hurt, bro. And then you're going to fall into trans regret. Well, it's scary, man. Read this, bro. Uh, That's harsh. Well, we got to read it out loud. Some people are listening on Spotify. May Allah bless them. So, Sister Sonia writes, I'm an ex-rad femme. Uh, you guys know what that is. And an anarchist in some sense. And I have seen madness. I was close to being a nihilist because of this gender ideology. It made me depressed, so I turned to religion. Mashallah. May Allah bless her. Mashallah. I mean, I mean. But man, it's crazy, bro. These these people who, who go through this, what you just said, man. Like, bro, they're going to get to the point where they do regret it. And by that point, it's too late, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't go back. Like, yeah. if if you were a man from the beginning and you ended up chopping your... PP. Can I say it? PP. Can, can we say this on live? No, no, no. Just say PP, bro. PP. Just say it, bro. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get this whole thing deplatformed, bro. <laughs> We're this close, guys. We are this close to be completely booted off all social. We've already gotten banned from Patreon and getting. Else. Can I say it in Spanish? No. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You, you got a lot YouTube of you got a lot of YouTube it? geeks, bro, in in Mexico that are that are trying to block channels left and right. They're gonna see. You. They're already coming for you, bro. Subhanallah, we can't even say the word, guys. Cucumber. They cut the cucumber off. They cut in the cucumbers. And once they don't have that cucumber no more, and they realize, what the hell did I do? <laughs> yeah, it's too late. You can't get that cucumber put back on. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And Sister Sonia, if you want to write down any of the changes that, if you're still watching, any of the changes that you've gone through and lessons you've learned along the way after you've left these weird man-made ideologies just to destroy men and women and humanity as a whole in the Ummah, and what you've kind of learned after you reverted back to your natural inclinations, mashallah, let us know. Yeah, bro, we need, we need, this is why we need to use a call-in function. We yeah, definitely need to use a call-in function, yeah. Inshallah, okay, cool. Aside from that, we're going to go right into the next video. Bismillah, guys, smash the like button if you made it this far. Hashtag cucumber, so we know who made it this far. The cucumber. Bismillah. The cucumber. Get ready for some madness, guys. Uh, we're talking about gender and, and sex, and there's a lot of controversies there. If we're talking about a trans woman has all of the male physical characteristics, so would that not be a male then? Couldn't, couldn't we plainly say this person is a male? Well, wh well I guess it's, it's like, wh why are you asking the question? I think I, I, w I want to understand sort of why that's so important. So if someone tells Just you... Just to, to sort of understand reality, you know? Well, I mean, I think when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. So if a person says that they're a woman or uh, they're a man, then that's them telling you their gender is. I'm, I'm not so sure why, what social um, in interactions would have to do with 
with maleness or femaleness that would well, be... I'm not even talking about social context. I'm just, I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of, like, g getting to the truth. Again, in social why, why life... Is that, why is that uncomfortable? Because that, it sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and, if you, and, and if you keep probing, we're going to stop the interview. I, if I probe about what the truth is? You keep invoking the word truth, which is condescending and rude. I'm saying how is, to you... How is the word truth condescending and rude? Why don't you tell me what your truth is, and you're walking on 30 seconds more of the nights before I get up. <laughs> what my truth is? Well, I don't think I really have a truth. I think that there's just the truth, like the reality. And so we should begin by trying to figure out what the reality is. Uh-huh. And why are you concerned with when someone else tells you that they're a man, or even if they use the word male, why are you concerned with not believing them? Well, you keep bringing it back to, you know, how do you respond in a social situation? But, That's what I do. I'm a social scientist. Well, right. But we're in a university. This is a place of understanding truth, isn't it? Or Absolutely. We, are, we pursue the truth. truth, and it's I'm like, a social scientist, and that's what I but do. But you just said the truth is transphobic. Th that you would say, if, it, you're, if you're saying the truth is that I get to say, you're not a man, show me your genitalia, that's transphobic. No, no, yes. I don't want to see anybody's genitalia. I, I, I just mean, <laughs> someone can make a statement about themselves that could be untrue. Like, for example, if I, if I were to say that I'm a black man, could you, would you accept that, or would you s be skeptical? Are you wow. black? Are you African American? Are you biracial? Wow. Why are you kidding? I don't think so. Yeah, well, you don't look that, and I don't think that's a. That, it doesn't sound like that's a genuine statement of who you what? are. Okay, so that's my point. I, I could make a statement about who I am that's incorrect. Of course, I think it's well established that human beings can lie. Yes. Or not even lie. I mean, I could just be mistaken. Yeah. I'm uh, not sure where you're going. I guess this all comes back, just, this all comes down to really one question. Um, especially women, gender and sexuality studies. So, so what, what is a woman? <laughs> Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, who this, is your, this is what you do. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? Look at his body language getting closed. A lot of like this where you're, where you're not answering. I've gotten a lot of that. So. I think it's interesting that you, that you say that some of the people you've, you've um, interviewed have been um, reluctant to answer it. And I think that has a lot to do with the way the question. And guys, listen, I'm sorry for the zoom-ins, bro. I just had to when I was editing this, bro. <laughs> I got to see that one more time, bro. <laughs> you've um, interviewed have been um, reluctant to answer it. And I think that has a lot to do with the way the questions that preceded it and the, the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? You, you, <laughs> you just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so the you wanted that to, I do. You wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. I but, just but what is that? As a woman. But, do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, because you're seeking what we would call in my field of work an essentialist definition of gender. I think it sounds like you would like me to give you a set of biological or cultural characteristics that are associated with one gender or the other. I'm not seeking any type of definition. I'm just seeking a definition. Yeah, and I gave you one. Well, now I can say I've been to college. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. We should get someone to, to analyze everything, what he was saying, the body language, and just completely break it down. Mm. I don't think you need to be an expert. We, to, we don't uh, need to be an expert to do that. <laughs> but what I found profound, guys, is the hypocrisy between the first thing this man, I said, Stokfullah, did I'm even call him that? If someone tells you they're a woman, you should believe them. Contrast that with, I don't believe it's a genuine statement that you're black. Why? Why, why do you have an issue accepting that he's, mm -hmm. he's black? Yeah. 
if they look like a man but they say they're a woman and we should believe that sure yeah then if they look like a five-year-old and they want to go after a five-year-old girl we should believe that yeah where do you draw the line And again, something you notice about this interview again is is the whole notion of truth. He brings it up. Matt Walsh brings it up a lot. And they always respond with this kind of, you could see the cognitive dissonance. You could see how frustrated they're getting because it's kind of like, you know, imagine I I make a, a, a reality for myself where I'm a blue-pilled guy. I make a fantasy world for myself where I'm like um, an astronaut and a doctor and a musician. And I mean, this haram, you know. Akari and all these amazing things and someone comes and they're like listen you're you're none of those things like where's your credentials mm. let me hear your side quran and all of a sudden i start getting angry that cognitive dissonance because they're breaking apart my fantasy because it's not the reality it's you know i'm waking up to the haq i'm waking up to the truth and it's a very de detestful if that's a word feeling right so obviously no one would like that you could see it with these people well it's so sad these are our medical experts these are doctors these are professionals and this is how they're conducting themselves mm. Mm. Two questions here that I want you all to answer. Rami, bro, why don't you take a spin at it? Could we possibly see Matt Walsh on the podcast? Inshallah. 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 I'd really love nice. to ask him why he's still Christian. Because if he has an open mind, let's talk about some stuff. You know? Bismillah. Next question, bro. I can't see. Oh, because his brother Ben Ikra writes, Salam, guys. Have you looked into using OBS for your streams instead of StreamYard? The reality is, uh, Brother Ben, I say this in, in the most loving of intentions, that this will be our last live stream, not forever, but for a while, because we are switching over to professionally recorded uh, episodes, podcasts, inshallah, editors, uh, multiple angles, all that. They're pre-recorded. They're not going to be live anymore. And they're going to start next week on Friday, inshallah, July 1st, 2022. Y'all are going to get fresh new podcasts every single Friday. So no more of these live streams anyway. So inshallah, you'll get good production quality. Not just, you know, lighting like this where it's just getting it done for the podcast, inshallah. Okay, we got two more clips to react to, but anything else on her? You didn't really weigh in on this, this clip much. On this clip? Yeah. Mm. It just goes to show, like, these people... They um they want to be right so bad, mm. you know. Like as as Muslims, if we are not right and we are corrected, it's like okay, you know, like it, or if we have no idea what we're talking about, we're like, look, like I just don't. Sure, know. we don't know. You know, like let me let me give you the information from someone who does know, right? We we don't try to um put up this front. But that's what you see these people doing all the time. Mm. Is they're putting up this front. They're trying to say like that this is what it is when clearly it's not. And then when they're questioned about it, they get defensive. Like Rami said, cognitive dissonance. But then it's also like their ego is like, no, like we have, we have to be correct. Like we have to stay on this in whatever way, shape or form we can. So mm. it's just it's it's sad, dangerous, bro. bro. It's pathetic. Yes, I want to read some of these comments, bro. Miss you guys. Halal Moaz, bro. <laughs> you got on the podcast a couple of months ago. Salam alaikum. Bro, you coming to see us or not? Yeah, bro. You still using that uh, facial cleanser at night? <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> Just playing with you. <laughs> Next, we got brother Moeed. Will you be on Spotify? Not only will we be on Spotify, we've been on Spotify since we started this podcast about a year ago, since episode one. Uh, just search us up the three Muslims, one word, just as it is on YouTube. Inshallah, you will find us. We're on Apple as well, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, so many, so many platforms. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Okay, last one. I identify as a billionaire. Where are my billions, you bigots? <laughs> but if you're a billionaire, show us the money. <laughs> show us the money, boy. SubhanAllah. Okay. So, Sister Rights, mashallah. Well done, guys. Came a long way. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All praise to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I want to I want to use that example of the billionaire. Please do, bro. Just to, to show how funny it is, because this is actually what they do. You know, I come and I say I'm a billionaire. And they're like, show me your bank account, show me your billions of dollars. I'm like, what do you mean? Why would I need billions of dollars to be a billionaire? I'm a billionaire. It's like, well, what is a billionaire? It's a billionaire. Okay, but what is it? It's a billionaire. It's like, show me billions. It's like, 
I don't need to have billions of dollars to be a billionaire, but I'm a billionaire. That's exactly what they are doing. Mm. Yeah, the circular death. Let me let me let me bring that up. Actually, you know what? You guys already seen this. You can rewind it if you want in your free time. But basically, that's what that man was saying. What is a woman? Yeah. Someone who identifies as a woman. What is that? A woman. What is that? A woman. Like, bro, you got ovaries. You got an X and a Y chromosome. You got a vahi vahi down there. I'm trying so hard not to be a jihad. Me too. This. And that makes you a it's woman, bro. Right that makes you a woman. Is it that hard to say, bro? Your son comes to you, bro, and like, tells you he wants to be a girl. He feels like a girl. What do you say? All right, bro. Hey, let me get you this dress. Let's paint your nails, bro. And let's let's go to school, bro. I'll go like that. Let's see how you feel. It'll probably be a shame. Probably Actually, society ashamed, would love that. They call that gender affirmation. Yeah, see, I can't even say that. Can't even say that, bro. You can't even be sarcastic, bro, nowadays. Facts, Rami. Alhamdulillah. You guys need to start a halal fight club. <laughs> Feels like a contradiction in terms. Bello writes, I always, I really always learn from this channel. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. No, they're talking about like the movie. You seen it? Uh, yeah. It's not talking about like an MMA club. It, it's <laughs> like, well, I can't speak about it. <laughs> That's one, of the, one of the rules of Fight Club is you can't, speak, you can't speak about it. Let's do the last clip, inshallah. This is not directly from the documentary, but this is something I want to kind of comment on. Of course, I have been covering the uh, wonderful month of pride, for which I feel no pride for at all. I think it should be called shame month. It's absolute debauchery. Um, but you should know that over $200,000 is being spent on drag queen shows at New York City schools. Why? I don't know. I am not sure why Drag Story Hour in New York City need, needed $46,000 injected from city contracts for appearances at public schools and street festivals and libraries. Why that need to happen? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's very obvious that there is an agenda on our children and they keep trying to tell you that you're homophobic if you talk about it. But it's not homophobic to talk about the fact that they are going after our children. I have said on this show and I have been mocked for it that it's very obvious that pedophilia will be around the corner. Right. There's no reason that we should be seeing images of children putting dollar bills in half naked men that are dressed up as women and seeing adults applaud it around as, oh, this is love. Love is love. Love is love. By the way, that is one of the dumbest expressions I've ever heard in my life. Love is love. Air is air. Air is water is water. It's stupid. Debauchery is debauchery. And that's what we're looking at right now. Our society has become increasingly disgusting. I spoke about this last week. And when, when you believe, when you start to see that your government is sponsoring that, when they're putting real dollars behind things like drag queen story hour in New York City, you should realize that something nefarious is going on because the government does not care about your children. No, the government does not love your children. The government does not want your children to be accepted. The government wants your children to be enslaved to government for the rest of their life. And right now, as we're seeing, there is a marriage between government and big pharma is my belief that that is the push behind this effort to tell children that they can pick their gender and to confuse them. I believe our government is actually sponsoring mental illness. I've said this over and over again, right? Because people that are mentally ill cannot stand up on their own two feet, mm. right? They become codependent with the government. They turn to the government for their hormone pills. They turn to the government mm -hmm. for whatever pills that they can to make it feel better, right? And you are seeing right now that adults are getting behind this narrative so that they can have a woke t-shirt on and say, I love my children. I, I allow my child to pick their gender and pick their species. And they feel proud of themselves because they can go and they can say this on Facebook that they're a wonderful, accepting and loving adult. But in reality, they are underqualified to have children. They should have their children taken away from them because it's child abuse. It is child abuse to put a half naked adult in the room with a small child and having them read a book. It's just child abuse. That's what it is. It's child abuse to ask your child your child to take a dollar bill and put it into the thong of a grown adult. It's child abuse. It's child abuse for teachers to be telling children, knowing fully well that it is a lie that they can switch their gender biologically, right? But to encourage that behind a parent's back, that's child abuse. So the question remains is when, when do parents draw the line and start realizing this? Start realizing that the scholarships and the nice schools are not worth all of this. It's not worth allowing your child to be abused by mentally ill adults. And we don't identify and agree with everything else that far-right extremists like Candace Owens, I'm going to say it as it is, extremely pro-neoconservative politicians, we don't agree with them in everything. But what we will say is when it comes to preserving conservative traditional values, religiosity, 
even though some of them follow some kufr ideologies, but religiosity as a whole, principles, the family unit, the family structure, saying no to abortion, saying no to drugs, saying no to big pharma, saying no to alphabet gang, the conservatives got it right for now. Because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? And Candace is right, bro. SubhanAllah. They're manufacturing mental illness because mental illness is extremely profitable. And a state that is mentally sane will not bring Uncle Sam a single dollar. Mm. That's why I think the biggest problem lies is the mental illness component. Because we, we all got issues, if you think about it. You know, like, yeah, we might not go out here, like, blatantly, like, throwing it out. They're like, yo, I got anxiety, bro. Mm. No, no, like, we all got things going on in our head. Of course. And then, like, if some people, they actually, um, they take it too far. They start thinking about it too much, and they start identifying with it. And then that's when it, like, consumes their life. That's when they start taking medication, they start going to doctors, they start going to psychologists and all this stuff. And it just, like I said, it consumes everything. But then you have people who get past it, right? So this whole thing about like thinking you're a girl when you're actually a guy or thinking you're a guy when you're actually a girl, like, listen, this is, an, it's another case. It's, it's exactly the same as anxiety. And um, an example I want to give you, this person that I know, uh, this dude used to paint his nails. He used to paint his nails. And I, I would ask him, I was like, bro, what is that? Like, what the hell is on your nails right now? And then he's like, oh, I painted my nails. I'm like, yeah, no, I know that's that. But why is that on your, your nails? Like, you, you're a man. Like, why do you have that on your hand? He's like, oh, bro, like, it's all right. Like, it's not a big deal. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, it's, are you serious, bro? Like, listen, why don't you go to jail and then paint your nails? And then see how the <laughs> see how the other men treat you in jail, bro. Like they're gonna pull their pocket out and be like, "Here, grab onto this, buddy. Like you're mine." And they they're gonna say it very clearly, and it's sad, but it's like he said. I said that to him, and he started laughing. I was like, "No, bro, this is very serious. Like you're over here painting your nails. Like this is not normal. A man should not be painting his nails." And he tried to say that he was customizing his character. It's like bro, customizing like, your character. You bro. can't do other things. You can't. You can't, you, you can't look on your your wardrobe or some nice fits or some nice shoes. Yeah, you gotta paint uh, your nails. Stuck for a lot, bro. And he tried telling me about this uh, friend he had, and this friend he had was um, I don't even remember the name. I, even if I did, I shouldn't say. It. But he said the name, and I was like, um, that's that's a guy. No, no, I said, that's a girl, right? And then he's like, no, 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 it's, it's not a girl. And then when I see it, I'm like, oh, it's a guy. He's like, no, it's not a guy. I'm like, what is it then? And he's like, oh, it's, it's, it's an, it, it doesn't define as any of the genders. I'm like, oh, damn, bro, like, here we go. Oh, Brother Halal Moaz writes, Allah. how do you guys feel about your future kids growing up with these societal norms? <sighs> Truth be told, I will still have kids. I will never be a black killer who says I'm never going to have kids. I give up on this because of the state of society. Because 10, 15 years ago, we could have said the same thing. We could have said, hey, the world hates Muslims. I don't want to bring kids into this. You know, uh, five years ago, when this whole uh, radical femme movement started, you know, spreading like a carcinogen. We could have said, hey, I don't want to bring kids because they're going to neuter my boy and they're going to radicalize my girl. Mm -hmm. 15 years from now in the future, who knows what could happen, bro? There's this thing called trans age and trans species and trans race. Okay. Trans race is absurd. We've already reacted to it. Right. Trans age is a little weird. They're pushing the, the touching the children narrative. But trans species is just something else. Remember that that wolf on the movie we watched? What is a woman in the documentary? There was a, there was a guy identifying as a wolf. Yeah. Where God. do you like? It's funny. I was trying not to laugh, but bro, where do you draw the line? And and the thing is, bro, it's only gonna get worse. This was prophesized by the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was uh, foretold by a lot of even secular individuals that are that are geniuses of their time. And just look at the trajectory where it's going. You you don't want to have kids, and this is not you know talking to brother Halal Moaz. This is just in general people saying faith in humanity lost. I don't want to have kids. If you don't want to have kids, then there's gonna be these idiots having kids and teaching them kufr ideologies and all this BS. Where do you think that's gonna go? Rather, we should have more kids 
and teach them proper values. Yes, inshallah. Our kids should be the leaders of the next generation. You should have kids, inshallah, with the goal that this person is going to spread Islam and give dawah and bring many people to Islam, inshallah. Um, you know, imagine if like, you know, like Muhammad Hijab's parents were like, oh, I don't want to bring a son into this, you know, this generation or something, you know. But I have the brother, inshallah, you know. So, inshallah, just... Uh, have a good intention, have a good niyyah, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, take care of the rest. I mean, you know, to an extent, to an extent. Home, homeschooling. Um, not what Rami said, but the comment there. Um, and I think this is where we should give a big shout out to Faraz Zahabi when we had him on the podcast. And like, he's clearly putting his kids in school, but he's also clearly like in the mm. kids' lives and like mm. really explaining things to them. Like, look, this is why we believe what we believe. Yeah. Yes. You know, and that's the most important part because like we can't we can't completely um, veil them and like hide them from society because at some point or another they're going to be in society, so they're mm -hmm. going to see it for what it is. So why not let them experience that, but also show them like, look, this is where the problem lies. This is where there's the fault. This is what it actually is. Exactly. That's what uh, Brother Montasia was writing. Just be good fathers, people, and you should prevent this disaster. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. If you guys don't know the clip that Brother Anil was talking about. Type up the three Muslims clips. This is our second channel on YouTube. And it's one of the most viewed videos. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. This got on news articles. This got on websites and magazines. This podcast that we did with Faraz Zahabi. But this specific clip. So inshallah. Don't miss out on that. I think we should do the Q&A and then wrap up. Yes. Inshallah. Okay, guys. Important questions. Let us know. Uh, and inshallah, we will wrap this up. Sure, that was more. It was quick. But an hour just passed by. Okay, first one wrong here. I'll let you do it. A gay individual I know from college said the world started to go down in 2015. I told him that it correlates with gay marriage being approved in the U.S. and he denied it. Slippery slope is real. It's well, not a question though. Okay, we got we got a couple questions now. You asked for it, bro. Do you guys know Japan banned some same sex marriage recently? Good. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. Wokeism is a disease that needs to be eradicated 100 percent Okay, brother Rami, how do you respond to people who say, Why don't you move to a Muslim country if you don't agree with the West? I mean, you say that like Muslim countries actually have like Sharia law and they're, they're proper. And, <laughs> bro, go to Dubai. They're the most Western. They're more Western than the West, bro, in Dubai. Uh, Saudi, you know, subhanAllah. I won't say anything about them, but yeah. they have Nicki Minaj concerts and stuff. Like, what am I, what am I going there for, subhanAllah? Stuck for Allah. Yeah, and, and half the, bro, half the Middle East is torn up. Yeah. And think about it too, like, if you're in a Muslim country, the dawah opportunities is... Far less because yeah, sure. supposedly, supposedly the entire environment around you is Muslim. Yeah, you know. So like, who do you give dawah to? That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. He about to write. Is there really a difference between homophobia and being against the ideology? So, phobia, psychiatrically speaking, is a fear of something medically, right? Yeah. They've used phobia here as a political term of just saying you're against the ideology. Are you scared of gays? If 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 you don't agree with them, so, no. Why are they calling you homophobia yeah. or homophobes? Yeah. So the 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 definition, like you mentioned, it is a fear, right? Phobia. Uh, they use it to, whenever someone has uh, hatred for or prejudice against gay people. Not even hatred, bro. You're just disagreeing with it. No, I mean that's how they use it. But mm. the, the 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 textbook definition, when you look it up, is is prejudice, prejudice against yeah, or yeah, hatred yeah. for uh, gay people, essentially, or homosexuals. And um, the thing is, you know, you you can disagree with someone and not hate them. I think the only people that cannot disagree and not hate is is the people of that community. To be completely honest, because they it, it's unfortunate, but they, you know, I mean, they make it their entire personality. So if you disagree with it, you no, know, that's ent their entire personality. So it's like you disagree with them, their existence. And that's you know, I, it seems the, to be the case that that's how they see it, unfortunately. But it's um, there is a big, big difference between disagreeing with someone and uh, having a hatred or a hatred for or prejudice against them. Hmm. SubhanAllah. Next question. Uh, not a question, but a comment. If we give up on having kids, we will not have the next Saladin. MashaAllah. Saladin lived in uh, times of fitna. Facts. 
binta asim writes what can you tell a knowledgeable person that says the more you pay attention to this the more it'll affect us i mean it could be true you know if 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 the more you're exposed to something, the more it will affect you regardless. You are a product of your surroundings to a certain extent. You are affected by everything. Bro, honestly, I, I could see a sad video on TikTok and feel depressed for the next hour. Like, you know, it's it's normal. Um, but that's not to say we shouldn't, you know, entertain discussions with these things. I mean, you know, if the truth needs to be spoken, go speak it. If you're a person who can't kind of indulge in these conversations without coming out completely and utterly, you know, messed up or or depressed or whatever it might be, then maybe you shouldn't have these conversations. But you do need, you know, as Allah even mentions in the Quran, a people, a group of people to arise and speak the truth and so on and so forth. Mm, got you. Okay. Next question. Uh, Fira writes, I want to study Islam in Egypt. Mashallah. My mother doesn't allow it though. I'm 18 and given the Quran. Uh, is this Surah 9 verse 122? He wrote 9 semicolon 122 that's how you write quran versus and no one here in my area knows islam properly is it's basically a fart on me to go can i secretly go we're not qualified to get fatwas bro <laughs> go ask your sheikh inshallah inshallah moid writes i'll ask this again if you're not scrolling back up do you feel like therapy and medication is okay in islam again we cannot give fatwas bro yeah amat writes do you think at some point we might have to create muslim villages far from the cities where we will be able to raise our kids far from this madness Let's talk to the king of living off grid. I mean, bro, I'm by no means. A king Inshallah, of one day. Off grid. Inshallah. Um, that's, that's a good question. But again, I, I, I don't, I'm not against that. I think that would be really cool. Mm. I think it would be um, a very different life for the kids, like upbringing them. But at some point or another, they're going to be exposed. And it's like, do you want to show to them? And then when it finally hits them, like they just really don't know how to handle it and it's just too much for them. Or do you want to start to expose them to it, but be there and like make sure that they can handle that exposure, almost like exposure therapy, like they can handle that to where they can finally stand on their own without being um, influenced by these ex these exposures, these things that they're being exposed to. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Anything else on me for that point? Um, it's not really about off-grid, but it's about the children. You know, there are, and you probably, probably know this a lot better than me, but there are certain years when the, the children, they learn the most, they grow the most, and they really start to, you know, form their personality, who they are. Um, so if you take these prime years and really focus on teaching them what's right, I think it'll set, inshallah, a good foundation for when they do eventually go to school to be able to, you know, not really um, fall into this, this agenda, really, and not fall into these narratives and be, unfortunately, very confused. Mm. Mashallah. Next question. Sky X Masks writes, off topic five, what's your workout routine? <laughs> I don't work out, bro. Yeah, it doesn't work out. I don't out. work out. I don't know why you guys thought I work out. Next you question. We are the only ones that work out. Yeah, that's it. Ne same person, individual, mashallah. Will you guys bring Hamza back on the podcast? Which Hamza? Hamza Adonis. Adonis? Inshallah, if he's willing to come back, I don't mind, bro. Uh, Adonis, only, only Adonis, Ad Adonis, Adonis knows that to be a man means you must come back on the Three Muslims podcast. <laughs> and, and Jeffrey doesn't do it because... He's a boss, but Adonis knows, and he and he and he does what's difficult. Listen, we will only have him back on this podcast if he stretches while we're live. Let's <laughs> talk for a lot, bro. Ah, uh, question. Ant West writes, "Why fight always wearing hats?" Ant West, why are you always wearing hats? Mashallah. Mashallah. Zaid writes, "Did you guys move across the USA together for this podcast? We're in undisclosed uh, territory right now." Technically, international waters. <laughs> Subhanallah. Next, Rami. Brother Uzair mm -hmm. writes, do you think nationalism destroyed Islam, which started in WW1 or even before? Um, well, actually, there are many different things that destroyed Islam. Nationalism, I, I would say, is more so something that happened post-World War One when they divided the countries and then they're like, you're Lebanon, you're Jordan, you're Syria, you're Iraq, Iran, so on and so forth. 
then the nationalism began. But if you look before that, you can see, uh, you know, maybe sometime after the Renaissance period or during the Renaissance period, you could see the downfall of the Muslims. Um, they really formed two, maybe three different groups, people that are like, we should adopt everything from, you know, Europe and the West. And then the people that are like, we should adopt nothing from Europe and the West. And maybe a very few people that understood that we can take things like technology and advancements, believe their culture and their beliefs and stuff to them. Uh, so there was this huge disagreement, I would say, at that time. And as the West, Europe, and so on and so forth started literally sending agents, agents, yes, yes, this is not CIA movie or FBI movie, this is the real life. They sent agents, and we have their names. Um, I think Muhammad Abdul was one of them, a bunch of people, he sent agents to go, basically infiltrate the Muslims, start teaching their um, misconceptions of Islam and so on and so forth. It divided the Muslims even more, and Europe got stronger and stronger and stronger. They sided with people in Africa, people in the Middle East, different groups uh, during World War I to get them to turn against the Muslims, go against the Ottomans, and the rest is literally history. Which mm. They don't teach any of that stuff. I don't know, bro. I need an episode one day. Yeah. Maybe on an exclusive platform, yeah, though, again, not YouTube. Yeah, brother Adnan Rashid, inshallah. Inshallah. Thoughts on Miami? What do you want? I want to give a huge shout out to Only Stunton for giving the most broad question that we've ever gotten in the last year and a half on YouTube. Thoughts on Miami? What do you want to know about? That's like saying thoughts on water. (laughs) Next question. uh, Asid writes How should I approach this topic with my younger brother? Should I introduce it to him directly and teach him against it? Should I just mention it or should I not mention it? I should mention he's homeschooled and knows nothing of this. You should slowly start to present this. And you could be like, oh, when you're in public, have you seen that there are some guys like holding other guys' hands or some women holding other women's hands? And just ask him like what he feels about that, what he thinks about it. And then you go from there. I think it depends on a lot of different things. How old is the, is the kid? What do they know so far? about not just about like you know the community but more so about gender and if he knows he's a boy and if he knows what boys are and girls are and the difference if there is one and uh, you have to gauge where he's at and like brother Ahana said just slowly slowly introduce it to him and put him on the right path inshallah he about to write is there something as integrating integrating gays who identify as muslim into the muslim community um, well, I mean, it, honestly, it really depends. I think that is kind of a vague definition. They're gay. What do you mean they're gay? Like they have an attraction to, to other men or they believe it's okay to act upon that attraction to other men? I think let's go with the latter. Yeah. So if you're talking about people who are gay, identify as gay and believe that it's okay to act upon these things in Islam, this person very well may not even be a Muslim because they would be taken out of the fold of Islam because they're disagreeing with the Quran and what the Prophet والسلام, taught us about Islam. Straight up. Yeah, so that person wouldn't be a Muslim. So in that, by those definitions, you cannot have a person who is gay and Muslim. You can have a person who is attracted to the same gender, the same sex. Um, maybe even if they've slipped once in their life, twice in their life, that doesn't take them out of Islam, as long as they know it's sinful. Then they could still be a Muslim, 100%. Mm. Hey, you calf. Firar writes, we had the sound bites, yeah, I know. Yeah, Firar writes, how to find the halal wife from your live chat? Don't. That was wrong with you, bro. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> you coming here for knowledge or are you coming here for. I have the proper intention. You're probably messing around, but come on, bro. <laughs> I have some other, bro. Come <laughs> the on. The sound bite, man. The sound bite. <laughs> Where is that? If you would have you. put it on right there. Who's there coming clutch with the questions, mashallah? Guys, what is your favorite Muslim leader like Sultan or Caliph and your guys' favorite Muslim empire? Well, I've never thought about that to be honest. Me neither, but let's go. Um, Islamic leader in general, just mm-hmm. like in general, mm-hmm. Omar radiallahu anhu, bro, he Allah expanded Allah. Islam like no one else, bro. like no one else. He went to like the borders of China, subhanAllah. Mm. From Mecca, man, mashallah, that's amazing. Um, I'm going to have to say Saladin Ayubi. I love you, please with me. He, he said that, uh, you know, and I again, this is, I don't know if this is a Sahih Hadith, I don't know, but it's well used in the Dawah scene. So do your own research, guys. Come on. Why are you listening to layman and taking what we say as legislative authority? Come on now. But if you want to corrupt a generation, make adultery and fornication, I believe, very common amongst the youth. He said this hundreds of years ago, bro. Yeah. I can't say I have a favorite Muslim leader. 
like a sultan or a caliph, but um, I definitely like Khalid, Khalid, Khalid ibn Walid. Yeah, he's the one. Inshallah. Because we got another EP that we about to record, and then we about to get ourselves some food. Mm. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, we got one more episode. We got to record after this, guys. But please stay tuned for July 1st, inshallah, next Friday. Uh, we need you guys. We need your support for the, the premiere to share the video uh, that airs. This this one, obviously, but share the video next Friday with your loved ones. Watch the entire video, guys. Give us that watch time and retention time. Uh, and inshallah, you guys will be satisfied with the podcast. Should Inshallah. we give them the topic or keep it a surprise? Just keep it a surprise. Yeah. Keep it a surprise. Inshallah. Let's take Inshallah. maybe one more question or so. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. We'll do two more questions and then we'll be done. Uh, Vladimir writes, Anhel, what is NoFap and what are its benefits? I'm going to speak on behalf of Anhel. He's not going to answer this because this is, come on, bro. That's like, after this point, if you haven't learned something about NoFap from Anhel, are, are you even listening, bro? SubhanAllah. Hamza writes, what is the best way to get over regret and guilt from the past? Man. No, Qadr Allah. And Allah does as he wills. You know, this is the decree of Allah. Allah does as he wills. Uh, the Prophet, والسلام, there's a beautiful hadith. I think I actually mentioned in the recording we did. So you have to wait till uh, July 1st for that one. But just to summarize, he says at the end of the hadith, وسلم, do not say if. You know, don't say if only I did this or that, then you know this would have happened instead. Rather say this is the decree of Allah, and Allah does as He will. So, same thing here. Don't regret it. Ask for forgiveness, whatever it is. Um, you know, make du'a for Allah to make you better. Try and make yourself better, and move on. If you let the past hold you, then inshallah, you'll you know you may never progress in the future. Mm. All right, last one, brother or sister, Amath writes. Gabriel Al Romani in the podcast on July second. First of all, I don't think I've ever said there's a podcast July second, and Amat is slick because they they corrected it to July first. May Allah bless you. Um, we'll, we'll we'll say this. Cannot say anything. No, because we already filmed the episode with July first, and if Gabriel just said he landed, how is that even possible? But if y'all can get this video to a thousand likes within a week, right? Inshallah, we'll try to see what we could do how about that. Fair enough. Thousand likes. Like this video, inshallah. Um, Sister Saleh writes, "Mashallah, Rami wiser than his age. Alhamdulillah. May Allah allow us to be as you see us. I mean. Okay. With that being said, guys, please do not bow the knee to the dominant ideology of alphabetization of a young men and women that have fitra, alhamdulillah, and do not change your ways to appeal to the masses. Mm-hmm. Rather, and, and prostrate that, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say it, say, it, say it again, bro. I said, rather prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fashjidu lillahi wa'budu. Alhamdulillah. And with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al-nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi وبركاته